Hey, thanks so much for checking out today's message at Propel Church. We believe that God is moving powerfully in our church and we would love to connect with you. So be sure to hit the like button, comment, subscribe, even share. If you want to get connected, you can visit our website, propel.church. But for now, let's lean in, take notes and enjoy God's word. Man, it is so great to see all of you today. Thank you so much for joining us for uh, our Summer in Galatia series. Have you guys enjoyed this sermon series so far this summer? Yeah, it's been really, really great to go through a book of the Bible alongside of you guys. Uh, if you are new around here, my name is Tori Newman. Uh, I serve on our staff as our operations director. I'm also married to our incredible lead pastor, Pastor Nick Newman, yeah, woo woo. Yeah, we love him, uh, who is in Michigan teaching at a church this morning, and so he trusted me with the microphone, so I'm very excited. Uh, if you're new around here, we just wanna say welcome. Make sure to stop by the new Here Tent. Uh, we've got a gift just to say thank you for joining us, and if you're online, we would love to see you in the house. We know it's summer, people are traveling, etc. but we would love to see you in the house because there's something different about being in the house. Isn't that right, y'all? Yeah, and uh, so we are in week five of this sermon series, Summer in Galatia. I'm just gonna give you a little recap. Man, we've had some incredible communicators this, uh, this sermon series, and uh, we kicked it off with Allie, kicked us off week one, woo-woo, uh, and she talked about Jesus is the only way to salvation. Don't get it twisted. There's just one way we live in a world and a time in which uh, culture is like, live your truth. And no, no, the gospel, there is one truth. There is one God. Don't get it twisted. There is only one way to God, and that is through Jesus. And then Pastor Nick taught in week two, four principles of embracing new life in Jesus. Those were some incredible principles. I'm not gonna tell them to you because I want you to go back and listen if you missed that message. Uh, and then we had Pastor Adam from Thrive Church here for week three. And, and what I really loved about that message that he taught was he was like, hey, we can either be Christ righteous or we can be self-righteous. Are we pointing people to Jesus or are we pointing people to us? And that was such a great message. And then last week, Pastor Nick did chapter four and he talked about God adopting us into his family and all of the benefits that come from being a part of the family of God. And now we are in chapter five. I've titled this message, How's Your Pressure? And uh, as Pastor Nick mentioned, and a couple of our communicators as well have mentioned, this letter that Paul is writing to the Galatians, we later on broke it down into chapters and verses. But when Paul was writing this, this is like one continuous thought. So as we look back at what he just said in chapter four about being a part of God's family and being in living in that freedom that God has for us, Paul kicks off this next portion, not skipping a beat, and he says in verse one of chapter five, so Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. It's really easy sometimes for us to, uh, to make a decision but it's, it's even more difficult to stay committed to that decision. I'll give you an example. Um, I have a gym membership. How many of y'all are, I have a gym membership and I don't remember the last time I went to the gym. Yep, that's me. Uh, I have a gym membership <laughs> and it was really easy to get started in that gym membership. It comes out every month really easy. Uh, <laughs> they, they, you know, they don't mind taking my money whether I'm there or not. Uh, but one of the things that as I, I go, when I go to the gym, I realize that I can have one of two mindsets when I leave. Now, when I leave the gym, I can either have the mindset of, I just went to the gym, I can go get ice cream. Or uh, my membership is at Sports Center, which is right there by Carolina Mall, and there's a movie theater. And I don't know if you know this or not, but you do not have to go see a movie and purchase a movie ticket to go get popcorn. 
And I love me some movie theater popcorn. And it is really easy on a Thursday night when I finish Zumba to be like, I just did Zumba. I am gonna reward myself with some popcorn. And then there's another mindset that says, you know, that one mindset is, hey, I went to the gym so I can do this. And sort of justifying the reason for, you know, whatever it is we choose to do post our workout. But then there's another mindset that says, hey, I went to the gym. Because I went to the gym, I'm not gonna do this. Hey, I'm going to the gym tomorrow, so I'm gonna make sure I drink enough water today and I'm not gonna have as much caffeine today because I'm going to the gym tomorrow. Or I went to the gym, I'm committed to my fitness, which means I'm probably gonna sub out my french fries at Chick-fil-A for a fruit cup, which is super disappointing. Uh, If we could have french fries and a fruit cup and that be a meal and acceptable, but there's no protein in that. Uh, (laughs) Or I'm gonna have a salad instead of a burger and fries. See, one of those mindsets justifies going to the gym, justifies our actions, by going to the gym. The other mindset takes the gym with us after we leave. And how often do we as Christians do that? Of where we come to church on Sunday and say, hey, I went to church on Sunday, so I'm good, I can do X, Y, Z. Or it's Saturday night, I'm I'm gonna go to church on Sunday, so I'm gonna get all of the bad stuff that I'm gonna do out of the way on Saturday, because on Sunday I'm gonna go to church. Or, hey, because I'm a Christian, because I have a relationship with Jesus, I'm not just gonna have a Sunday morning relationship with Jesus, now I'm taking him with me the whole rest of the week, which looks like I'm not staying out till one, two o'clock in the morning doing who knows what on Saturday night. No, because I'm prepping my heart to receive from God on Sunday. Hey, I have a relationship with Jesus, which means I'm probably not gonna watch, go see that movie that just came out that looks really good, but I can tell it's gonna be one of those movies I shouldn't go see. Or I'm not gonna hang out with those friends because they're gonna do things that God has clearly said in his word are not okay. Those are the two mindsets that we can have. And when Paul is saying, hey, make sure you stay free, he's saying, make sure you take the gospel and Jesus with you everywhere that you go because it's not just about getting free, it's about staying free. It's about saying, hey, yes, I have freedom, but I'm gonna continue to fight for my freedom, not so that I can have freedom. No, no, I'm fighting from a place of freedom to keep my freedom. And that's what Paul is saying in this chapter. And that's what it is all about. And he goes into uh, a little more detail because it's hard. Y'all, it is hard to get up early, to spend time with Jesus, to, to man, snooze is from the devil. I know it's great, but, but hitting that snooze every morning, knowing your alarm is just gonna go off in five, seven, nine minutes, whatever your settings are, instead of getting up out of bed and prioritizing time with Jesus, man, that's hard. But we know, we know this is what we need to be doing, but it's difficult. And Paul goes in verse 16, he goes into a little bit of detail of why it is difficult. He says, I say then walk by the spirit and you will certainly not carry out the desire of the flesh. Walk by the spirit and you will certainly be less likely to hit that snooze button. For the flesh desires what is against the spirit and the spirit desires what is against the flesh, these are opposed to each other so that you don't do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. What's Paul saying here? We need to recognize that there's a war going on inside of us. There are two forces at work in our lives. We've got the... Bible refers to it as the flesh and the spirit, the things of this world and the things of God is what that boils down to. We've got all pulls from every single direction. Do you feel it? 
Do you feel that pull to, man, I want to do what is right. I know what I should be doing. But it is so hard because people, because there are other people out there. Man, I could be so, I remember uh, I have been on lots of wonderful women's events and uh, just to conferences and everything. And it's like, yes, we're all on the same page. And then you get home and you run into that coworker that you really don't like. And it's like, oh, this is testing everything in me. Right. And, uh, and, and you know what the right thing is to do and you, you know you should do it but you simultaneously would like to throat punch the next person to ask you where the stapler is, which has been in the same place for the last two years. It hadn't moved. Or you're doing great, you encounter other people, you wanna be slow to anger, but if you trip over a toy that you have asked to be put away for the 18th time, you are gonna lose your mind. Because there's not just a war going on in you, there's also a war going on around you. Because we live in a world, in a culture, in a day and age, this is not anything new, that does its own thing. And God is calling us to live a little bit differently. And you cannot be in love with the things of God and the things of this world simultaneously. In Matthew 22, Jesus says this. He said to him, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important command. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you go back to the original Greek of this verse and you look at that word all, uh, in the Greek, and then you translate it back to English. It means all. Yeah. It means all. It means everything. There's not a, we didn't lose this in translation. With all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, which means we can't hold anything back from God. Right. This, is, this is the greatest and most important command, and it doesn't have to do with anything else it has everything to do with God and what we're giving him or lack thereof because so often we're like but but God I got this you can have all of it I'm just gonna take this right here I'm gonna keep this over here and safe and if I've got something in my hand and blessings can pour down but they're not gonna hit this why because I've got a closed fist It's only when we open up those areas of our lives that God can have an impact on them. When we open them up and we bring them to him and we say, hey, look, things aren't going so well. That's when he can come in and change our circumstances. But we have to give him access to it all. And I love the second one is like it, love your neighbor as yourself because so often we are willing to fight for the freedom of others and we're not willing to fight for the freedom in our own lives. But in order for us to love our neighbors as ourselves, we have to also be willing to fight for the freedom in our own lives. Which means we've got to be aware of the battle going on inside of us. And Paul doesn't leave us there. He's actually going to give us a list. Uh, how many of y'all love a list? Where are my list people at? Yes, I love list. And, uh, and <laughs> what I love uh, most about this is in verse 19, he says, Now the works of the flesh are obvious. We're going to pause right here. They're obvious. S- sometimes we can pretend like they're not there, but we know we know, we know that the works of the flesh are there. We know they're here, they are obvious to us. We're like, I don't know if this is wrong or not. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> it's not, we, may, we overcomplicate things. Well, we're like, God, we want us to tell, you know, tell us what we should do. Man, God, I want your heart for the nations, I want your heart for people. And he's like, how about you pray for that coworker that gets on your nerves? Yeah. Those are my people and I love them, how about I give you a heart for them? And it's like, hold on, that's not what I asked for. 
Now, see, the works of the flesh are obvious. They look like this, sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I am warning you about these things as I warned you before, as previously stated, see my other letter. I already told you about all these things, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Y'all, that's a scary thought. That the people who practice those things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And Pastor Nick talked last week about a benefit of being in God's family is that we have an inheritance, but not if we're acting, can we go back to that slide? Not if we are acting all of these things. I'm going to leave this up here while I talk to you about something that doesn't have anything to do with this. Oh, because I'm going to talk to you about the tire pressure light in my car. I know. I don't know anything about cars. That's not true. I know very little about cars. But I understand the tire pressure light in my car. And uh, it is an indication that my tires need air, which I super appreciate um, in my newer car, I drove a uh, 1996 Honda Civic uh, with the crank down windows for a long time. And, uh, and it was great, but I definitely had people like, hey, you have a flat tire, and I had no idea. Uh, so many times. Y'all have had the worst luck with tires. I don't know, <laughs> that's why it's in here, is because I can relate to all the things that go wrong with my tires. But uh, <laughs> a couple of years ago, the temperature outside dropped, and I don't know if you know this, and I don't understand the science behind it, but when the temperature outside drops, it actually affects the air pressure in your tires. It'll, it'll bring them down substantially. And so whenever it gets cold, I now know, okay, I don't need to immediately put air in my tires, but I should check on them later this afternoon when it warms up to see, did my pressure level back out, or do I need to go put air in my tires? And when I need to put air in my tires, I go to QT because it's free uh, or tire discount because they'll do it for me. Um, but I do not, I don't, I don't want to pay for air. Uh, but, but every now and then, the light would come on, I would go get air put in my tires, and then the next day or sometimes like a couple hours later, my light would pop back on. And I would be like, did I just put air in here? Maybe I didn't. Maybe I dreamt that I put air in my tire. Let me go put more air in it. And when the light keeps coming back on for the same tire, that's an indication that I, my tire has a leak. It doesn't have anything to do with the temperature outside. There is something wrong with my tire. And I can continue to put air in my tire and bring it back up to the PSI that it needs to be. But if I don't address the leak, I'm just going to keep losing air. And what does that have to do with this verse? This list, these are our tire pressure light. When you start to see these things pop up in your life, when you are under stress, when you are under pressure, that is an indication that something's going on. Those ones in bold are mine. <laughs> and believe it or not, the weeks that I teach, which are a little different, uh, I can experience all of the ones in bold in a single conversation, <laughs> which is a lot of fun for the people around me. <laughs> but see, when the weeks that I teach... I know already spiritual warfare is going to be high. The enemy is out to get me uh, the week that I teach, and he's going to bring up all sorts of stuff that really don't make a difference, like when the temperature drops outside and I lose tire pressure. Really what I need is in these moments, I go spend time with Jesus, and I really press in, and I worship, and I pray, and I'm like, all right, is there anything that's going on, or is it just because I'm teaching this week? Nine times out of ten, it's just because I'm teaching this week. I can move on. But when it keeps coming up, that means there's an underlying issue that I need to address and that I need to deal with. And when I have 
two or three people that come to me and say, hey, we've noticed these things, that's an indication, man, there's something deeper going on and I need to get to the root of it or I will hurt myself, not just myself, but everybody around me. And the same goes for you guys. If you do not address this, you are only hurting yourself. There's no healing that comes from pushing it down to the bottom and moving on. No, 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 the light's gonna come back on. Well, we've got to address these things. So what we need to do is we need to indicate our indicators. We need to indicate our indicators. Your indicators and my indicators may not look the same. You may not explode in anger like I do sometimes. Uh, There may be something else that happens. And, And when Paul says, hey, stay free, Don't get trapped up in the slavery. Don't go back to your old life. There may have been things before Jesus that really, uh, maybe they brought you comfort or peace or they numbed the pain. Maybe it was the bottom of a bottle. And Jesus is like, hey, I got better things for you now. And when you feel yourself being pulled back to your old ways of living, those are your indicators to go, no, no, that's not how I live anymore. God's called me to live higher and greater. And so I've indicated those things and now I can keep a watchful eye. Is this a one-time occurrence or is this a repeat offense that I keep finding? If I put air into it, I spend time with Jesus and, and, and I felt great, but then, you know, I ran into somebody else and I got angry all of a sudden, all over again for no reason. Okay, something else is going on. Something else is going on. What are the emotions or actions that come to the surface when things don't go your way? When your life is put under stress and pressure, look, when you and I are squeezed, what is in us is gonna come out. And sometimes that's not always a bad thing. Listen, sometimes what's in us needs to come out because it's time to get rid of those things. Yeah. And, and God is using whatever you're going through to bring things through the surface so you can address them and say, hey, I didn't know that I had this deep down, but now it's here, let's address it. Not just the symptom, but let's find the root of this problem. Yeah. Did something happen to me years ago and I'm still dealing with that? Am I still hurt from something somebody said years ago that man, I need to forgive and release and move forward? What is leaking out of you when you are being stressed? When when you're under pressure, when you stepped on another Lego? Once again, what's in you that's coming out? When you're angry or sad or scared, those are the times that our indicators come to the surface and we can address them. And you can try and fill yourself up with Bible plans and with serving, with attending a group, with coming to church on Sunday, but if you just keep pushing those things down, they're gonna they're gonna find their way back up to the top. If you don't address them, if you don't take time to get prayer on a Sunday or to talk openly with your group or to say to whoever you are serving with, hey, will you pray for me real quick? Here's what I've got going on. Will you help walk me through this? It's just gonna find its way back to the surface again. And time does not heal all wounds. If you do not address a wound, it will fester and get infected and impact the entire rest of your body. We've got to address the things in our lives that come up that are not of God. Because just like with the tire pressure in my tires, if I don't address a leak one day, I'm gonna end up stranded on the side of the road. And the same goes with us. So those are all the things we shouldn't do. What should we do? 
I'm glad you asked because Paul's got a great answer. And he says, those are the things of the flesh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. The law is not against such things. And here we see that word, the law, again, because in that time they were like, relationship with Jesus, but also there's a law we've been following for years and years. No, no, the law's not against any of these things. Because if this is how you're living your life, you actually automatically fall under those things because you are not gonna harm your neighbor. You're not gonna put anything else above God. You're gonna rest like God has called us to rest and all of the other commands in that law and they fall under these. This is what our life needs to produce. And our lives are gonna look different than the people who are not living the way God has called. For non-believers, for people that are not Christians, our lives are gonna look different and they should Because who, looking at our lives, if they're not any different, is going to say, yeah, I would like to follow Jesus even though you don't live any differently and your outcome is not any different than mine. Who's going to do that? Nobody. Nobody's going to do that. But if they see, hey, in times of your most despair, you had all the hope in the world and all of the joy. You were still filled with love and kindness towards one another, even though somebody said something that was not okay. And you're still, and you're okay. What's going on? I wanna live like that. And so we need to align our lives with God's standard of living. We've We've gotta realign ourselves with God's standard of living, because everything in the world is gonna change. It has changed for the most part. But God's word doesn't. Our feelings change day to day. Mine sometimes change hour to hour because I'm a very emotional person, so. (laughs) But God's standard for living doesn't change based on how we feel. How are we responding when people hurt us? Are we responding with forgiveness? And I'm not talking about forgiving somebody that did something awful to you and being reconciled to them. That's different, okay? Forgiveness and reconciliation are different. Some people are, have made choices in their life and are still making choices and you should not be reconciled to them. But it doesn't mean you can't forgive them and pray for them and pray God's best for them. It means that you're not holding on to the hurt anymore. Yeah. You're letting God heal you through forgiveness. And maybe say, somebody said something to you and, uh, and the world says, get even. What's the pettiest thing that you can do? Because that's the culture that we live in now is to just be petty all the time. And I'm over it. Because petty is not the answer. The world may say, get even. But God says, give grace. And to be so kind and loving and gentle and compassionate to them that there's no way for them to possibly pay you back. That's how much grace and kindness we've been shown through God sending his son. And so we get to turn around and do the same to others. So what do we do with the things that are not of God? Again, Paul has a great answer. If we keep reading in verse 24, he says, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. So what do we do with those things? We take them to the cross and we nail them there. 
and then we follow the Spirit's leading. We're saying, hey, Jesus, these things, you died so that I didn't have to carry them anymore. I'm bringing them to you. I'm bringing them to you and I'm nailing them there, which means I'm gonna leave them there. They are, I'm permanently placing them here. I'm not coming back to take them back down. No, no, I'm gonna leave them there and turn the other direction and follow the Spirit's leading. See, after Jesus was crucified, died, was resurrected, he then went and ascended up to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. But before he left, he said, hey, I'm gonna send my spirit to be with you, to help lead and guide you when we have all of this noise of the world. Sometimes it's hard to hear the spirit speak to us. But that doesn't mean that God's spirit isn't speaking to us. He's a much better conscious than Jiminy Cricket, all right? (laughs) But we have to tune our ears to hear that still small voice. Because it's not, we would love for God to speak to us through a megaphone. But he's speaking, how close are you? Are you close enough to hear him? Are you close enough to hear where the spirit is leading you? And so the temperature is gonna drop. And that may mean you need to put some air in your tires. It may mean, hey, there's nothing crazy going on that I feel, but I just need to spend time with Jesus in his word and just have him fill me up in this moment. Let me take a deep breath and say, no, I'm not going to do these things. I am going to choose something else instead in this one moment. But for, for others of you, your light keeps coming on and you keep filling up your tire and air keeps leaking out. And there's a deeper problem that you need to address. There's something that is going on. And look, during this next song, our prayer team is gonna be at these side walls and they would love to pray for you, to pray with you, to pray over you as you spend time with God and you discover what those things are and you say, hey, nope, I'm done with these. This is what I see in my life and I don't want that anymore. Man, it's time to get your joy back. It's time for you to remember what it's like to be kind to someone. And then for, for others of you, you can't do either of those things because you haven't put your faith and trust in God. You've not made him the Lord of your life. You don't need a patch. You need a whole new set of tires. And that's what Jesus can do for you to get a fresh start, a clean slate and say, hey, as you move forward in your life, it's not the end. No, no, I can do so much more in and through you if you'll let me if you'll surrender your life to me. So with every head bowed and every eye closed here today, maybe that's you. Maybe that's you and you say, I need to surrender my life to Jesus. Would you just lift your hand? Church, nobody prays alone. We're all gonna pray together. Would you repeat this after me? Dear Jesus, today I give you my life. I place my hope and trust in you. Thank you for dying in my place so that I could have new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us at Propel Church today. My name is Pastor Nick Newman, and on behalf of myself and our whole team here, we are so grateful that you chose to engage with our worship experience today and hear God's word. We would love to help you take a next step, but the only way we can do that is if you engage with us. So do us a favor, go to propel.church. If you feel led to uh, take a next step today, our website will walk you through that. And if you feel led to give, you can click the giving tab to partner with us financially to continue to impact Mount Pleasant and the surrounding areas for Jesus.